Here we can see we have four Boolean variables, A, B, C, and D. Now with four Boolean variables, we can have 16 combinations, as you can see here. 16 combinations means we need a Carnot map with 16 squares, as you can see here. Now we can see that A is a zero on eight occasions. And this equates to not A. So we can see we've labeled the map with not A, and we can see that there are eight areas of the map corresponding to not A. A is also a 1 on 8 occasions. So you can see the map sets aside 8 squares to represent these 8 ones. So we can see for the Boolean variable A we have 16 possible areas. 8 for when A is a 0, i.e. not A, and 8 for when A is a 1, i.e. A. Now we can see B is a 0 on eight occasions, so that equates to not B. So we can see the map has eight squares, all representing not B. This edge of the Carnot map is connected to this edge, so we can regard these eight squares as being next to each other. We can see that B is a one on eight occasions. Consequently, we need the area of the map set aside for when B is a one, as you can see here. We can see that B is a 0 on 8 occasions and is a 1 on 8 occasions, and we can see how the map reflects that. Here we can see when C is a 0 on 8 occasions, we have that being not C, and we can set aside 8 areas labelled as not C on the map, as you can see here. Of course, C is a 1 on 8 occasions, so the map sets aside 8 regions for C, as you can see labelled here. Side by side, we can see the regions for the not C and the C. 16 squares in total, because we can see that there are 16 entries below the C. We can see that D is a 0 on 8 occasions, and we can see that the map actually reflects this as well. 8 squares for the not D, and they appear to be separated, as you can see here. However, this edge is connected to this edge here. Consequently, with these areas can be regarded as being next to each other. Of course, there are eight occasions when D is a 1, and we can see them highlighted here, and we can see the area of the map that sets aside eight areas for the Boolean variable D. When they're put together, as you can see here, you can see that there are eight areas for the D and eight areas for the not D. And this shows the map fully labelled with the A's, the B's, the C's, the D's, and their knotted versions as well. Let's consider not A and not B. Now they overlap as I'm shading in here. Now it's quite clear therefore that those four squares actually will represent not A and it together with not B. Let's consider A with B, and that is representing by this overlapping area here that I'm shading in. Now it's quite clear therefore that this area it represents A and B. Consider the variable not C and D. Now this is where they overlap, this is where their areas overlap. Consequently, these four squares are known as not C and it with D. Let's consider A, B and C. Now their areas all overlap here as I'm shading in. Consequently, those two squares represent A and B and C. Let's consider the variable C and not B, which means I have to make sure I select both not Bs, and we'll consider that at the same time as the not D. Now, the area that represents the overlap for this is this square and this square here. That is where the C, the not B, and not D overlap. So the Min term C and not B and not D, in fact, is shown here by the shading in of these two squares. Now let's consider the variables A, B, C and D. Now where do they all overlap? Well, the answer is they all overlap here. Consequently, this square is known by A and it with B and it with C and it with D. Let's consider this shaded area. What represents this? Well, we can see it's in the not A area, 
it's in the not B, the not C and the D area. Consequently, this square can be represented by not A and not B and not C and D. Now, it's important to realise that if we have one square, it gives a four variable min term. For example, if we consider the one square, we can see that that is here. There is our one square. And I'm saying that it gives us a four variable min term. Well, of course, this is the four variable min term here. So we can see one square gives us a four variable min term. Let's consider the shading of these two squares here, or these two areas. Now, if we have a look at the not A and the A, we can see the shaded areas in both these. They overlap, so we discount those variables there. We can see it's all in B, C and D. So these two squares are represented by B and C and D. Now, if we have two squares, as shown here, then what that will always give, it will always give a min term that has three variables. So it gives a three variable min term, as we can see here. So we can see our three variable min term in this case is B and C and D. Let's consider this area here. We can see that when we look at the Bs, it overlaps the not B and the B, so we discount that one. If we look at the not D and the D, we can see it clearly overlaps those variables, so we don't count those. Now if we have a look, we can see it's in the not A and the not C. So this particular shading is representing not A and not C. Now if we have four squares, as we can see here, that means that we can quite clearly see it gives us two variable min terms, as you can see here. Let's consider this shaded area here. We can look at the A and the not A and we can see it's in both of these areas, so we can discount that. It also overlaps the C and the not C, as you can see here. It also overlaps the D and the not D area, so we can discount those. We can see that it is clearly all in B. And we can confirm that by saying none of it is in not B. Consequently, the entire shaded area is B. Now, it's quite clear that eight areas, as we can see here, or if you prefer, we can call them uh, eight squares, well, this will actually give us one variable. As we can see, in this case, it gave us B. The next video in the series will show us how to plot four variable sum of min terms and then minimize them using a four variable counter map such as the one we've just seen here.